What's up everybody, welcome to another episode of B is for Build. In today's episode, we are racing the 24 hours of lemons. Our team is comprised of Oscar, the helmet squisher honor professional, myself, the invisible steerer, Jared, the friendly giant, and Tavarish, the best looker. Anyways, what we're doing is we're racing lemons. 24 hours of lemons to be precise against Team Rich Rebuilds in the parking lot and Team Chris fixed it and looks concerned about it. I didn't even know where to start on this one, so I'm gonna start where we left off in good old New Jersey. We're sitting here donating, you know, that car. It is true, I pledged the entirety. And then donating that car. Turns out both of them not very donatable. I am, I made the pledge, I wanna be very clear, I pledged the entirety. It's something I'm uh, working on. So we dropped them both off at the donation station and I headed straight to JFK to get the hell out of town. Left the Range Rover in short-term parking. Jumped on a plane and said, uh, yes, yes to this. The next morning woke up feeling just about like death, which is fitting for me in a hospital because I was coming home to do my cancer treatments. If you want a quick rundown on how the situation is going, that little bag of medicine up there cost $74,000. We pump it into my body once every six months for an entire year to try and kill little microscopic cancer cells that may become big cancer cells. And we don't know if it works or if it doesn't work, but the fact that none of them have gone from little ones to big ones so far is a good sign that it is working. But we'll never know if it works unless I never get cancer again. Fingers crossed. And while I was doing that, Oscar was retrieving our race car from Chris Fix's house. So Oscar ditched his donator car, jumped in the race car, and street drove it straight to the racetrack in BS for Build fashion. Also in BS for Build fashion, please enjoy these words from our sponsor. Before we get down to work, I want to take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Leather Honey. Leather Honey is a family owned and operated company based out of West Virginia since 1968. It's a long time. And to put it simply, they're your one-stop shop for all your leather care needs. Leather Honey is great for use on all types of leather and colors, and their high-quality ingredients help condition and moisturize and promote flexibility on car seats, on home upholstery, and even your favorite shoes or belt or purse. And unlike other products on the market, Leather Honey penetrates into the fibers of the leather to moisturize them, and that means that one application can last up to six months. Leather Honey understands the value and importance of your leather products and how important it is to keep them looking like new. And with thousands of five-star reviews, their custom Customers agree, which makes Leather Honey the number one best selling leather care product on Amazon. I use Leather Honey here on my car. These are my most prized car seats, and they haven't been cleaned for a while. I clean them and condition them with Leather Honey. It is super easy to apply, super easy to use, and look at the before and after. Driver's seat's been done, passenger seat has not. It's incredible change. So guys, go check out how Leather Honey's cleaner and conditioner can help prolong the life of your leather by clicking the link in the description. Link below, link on the screen right here. You guys know the deal. Go check it out. And huge thanks to Leather Honey for sponsoring this episode and keeping our interiors fresh. So the day is Friday and the game plan for today is to pass tech with the vehicle, pass lemons BS inspection with the vehicle, and get some test laps down. Tech inspection, you pull in here, some guys from the racetrack look through your car with a clipboard and make sure it's safe. Happy to say we passed tech inspection on the first try, which is kind of a cool thing, because even though we may not be the best racers, it means that we built a safe race car on our first try. After it passes tech, you're on to Lemon's BS inspection, meaning bullshitting inspection. They're trying to talk about your budget, and they're looking at us, shaking their heads like, yeah, that's not a $500 car. So I made them this video. Good evening, Mr. BS Inspector. Chris, BS for Build here, reporting for duty. It's 2022, we all work remotely. As team captain, I should explain my absence as well as rack in sympathy dollars. So I had to fly home to do cancer treatment. So I'm not there today, unfortunately. I won't be there tomorrow, unfortunately, because I have to go to a funeral. But I will be there at the next day. So I wanna drive my car. And that is what we're talking about today. 2004 Mercedes-Benz CLK. Final auction price for this vehicle was $1,800. We bought it flooded at auction, sight unseen. Still doesn't even run well, only starts about half the time. But eventually half the time becomes every time and that's why we're here today. Vehicle cost being $1,800, we need to bring that down. The main way that we did that was by working with an eBay Motors super seller. Mullins Auto Parts, friends of ours, sell tons of stuff on eBay Motors. So our idea was to wholesale our parts to him and have him sell them on eBay Motors. So we tore the entire interior out. We had him give us a valuation of every usable part that he could list on his store. That's the list right here. We palletized all of that. We shipped it out to St. Louis. Then we shipped our own asses out to St. Louis to meet with him and collect the cash. So all the parts off this vehicle are now on eBay Motors through the Mullins Auto Parts site. We just lost the logo. Uh, I need the marketing dollars, let me get that. Right. So after palletizing and shipping and selling our parts that brought our costs down to $500 for the vehicle, 
On top of that, we also did the painstaking work of pulling the Mercedes engine out of this vehicle and replacing it with a cheaper Mercury engine, as you can see, uh, which saved us another $60. So $440. Good day, sir. I will see you on Sunday. And would you believe it? After I went through all the work of making that wonderful video, they said, yeah, it still doesn't seem like a $500 car. Okay. Still have the hard starting issue. But then when Oscar tried to fire it up to drive it away and it did what it does and didn't start. Oh, yeah. And they saw the concerned look on our faces. There we go. We'll start eventually every time. Yeah. We got the green flag of approval. Zero penalty laps, within budget, class A race car, head on out. Only thing we didn't get time to do was to test drive the car at all. So the car had never been on the track. The guys instead decided to change out the fuel pump that night to try and fix the non-starting issue. Spoiler alert, didn't do anything. The next day is Saturday and we're watching Oscar put on his clothes. This is where we could see that helmet squishing greatness. Okay. Oh, you can just feel it. Until it rips oh, yeah. a part of your ear off and then you're good. And off he goes, getting ready to start the 24 hours of lemons. This is a big moment of excitement for the team. We have no idea how the vehicle is going to perform. It really doesn't like idling. But as you can see, we're actually already three car lengths ahead of Team Chris Fix. So Oscar gridded up, and after a quick check of the wristband and once over on the safety, it's time for him to blindly pull out into traffic and try and race for the first time. I can tell you, with a head and neck restraint on, Figuring out where your opening is on the track is nearly impossible. You just go and find whatever opening you just made. And he did, and he made himself an opening and drove through that opening until, well, unfortunately, he kind of set an early record. He may have been the first person to get a penalty at this 24 hours of lemons. Now penalties can happen for a lot of different reasons, hitting another vehicle on the track, driving off the track for any reason. The big thing is, is they really promote self-reporting. If you commit a penalty, go in, self-report, admit your wrongdoings, and they'll be nice to you. At least that's what they tell you. He did it. Oh, did it? Yeah, he did. Okay. What's going on, dude? I went off track, so I, I just pulled off. Oscar went off track. There. Ooh, that's, that smells breaky. That smells real breaky. What? We're the first ones in. <laughs> He didn't mean it, guys, okay? It was an honest mistake. It's like the first Shame. laugh. Shame. I know, I know. Shame. Woo! Shame. What happened? I got pinched off in the corner and I just- Oh, it was somebody else's fault. Oh, oh somebody else caused his problem. <laughs> Were they turning the steering wheel too and pushing the pedals? So Oscar got his talking to, he learned his lesson to not drive off the track, and thankfully, Team Chris Fix, with the driver, I believe Chris Fix, also committed the same type of penalty, came in, took their licks, and took some time off the track. So we were still neck and neck with Team Chris Fix, and while Team Rich Rebuilds was still working on their arts and crafts at this point, so we didn't have to worry about them. And that got Oscar back out on the track to rip around some more until he then committed another, another penalty. This trying, time... I was trying to get out of the way and uh, I locked up my brakes and just went off. Oh, yeah. man, trying to get out of the way. You're trying to be too nice now. Well, so you're being too aggressive early yeah. and now you're being too nice. All right, so this is the Bart Simpson penalty we're gonna give you, which is a classic. You know the opening of Bart the Simpsons where Bart's always riding on the chalkboard. Right? So, so you're gonna take the Sharpie and you're gonna ride on the car a hundred times. S is for sucks, all right? <laughs> oh. You hate to see you it. Hate to you see hate it. to yeah. see oh. it. I'm just, you know. Okay. With our car completely Bart Simpsonized, which is fine by me because I do believe Lemon's car should not be pretty, and ours was a little too pretty. It was time to switch drivers because, well, at this rate, like Jay said, we'd be done racing by 10 a.m. if Oscar kept driving. <laughs> Team Chris Fix had gained on us by about seven or eight laps while we were riding on the car, and Team Rich Rebuilds, well, they were working on removing the water from their gas tank. And that meant it was time for Jared to get behind the wheel. Ooh, gonna get real personal here. Jared is our most seasoned driver. He has actually raced a Lemons before, but he has never finished a Lemons before. And he got out there and he drove 
fast. And I mean really fast, like he's passing RSXs and whatever the hell that thing is. The Crocs Celica, that IS-300 that really should have known better. And the Riff Raff, I mean he was ripping down the track while making sure not to break the vehicle, not pushing the vehicle to its very ragged edge. And when he was done with his session, our team had completed 77 laps. That was three more laps than Team Chris Fix had done, putting us in the lead over Team Chris Fix and in really, really good standings overall for the entirety of Lemons. But we're only three hours into an 18 hour long fake 24 hour race, so there's still a lot to go. At this point, it looks like Team Rich Rebuilds is trying to gravity bleed their fuel system. And we got Tavares suited up and heading out for his first time on the track. 30 minutes into his driving session, we caught a little oopsie. The only oopsie that we actually caught on camera, he went off track. So it's time to head in and self-report. So here's the thing. Uh, this is my first time uh, in this car, on this track, in any sort of uh, racing environment and make excuses. Lemons people love excuses. Now this being our third penalty of the day, there is a mandatory one hour track exclusion. You're kicked off the track for an hour because you're deemed a little bit dangerous. But for some reason, they give Freddy a fist bump and say, go ahead, drive on off. I think Jay was distracted by the flute. And what we learned is when you pull into the pits, find the guy in the orange shirt. And just like that, fist bump penalty, Freddy's back out on the track racing for another 30 minutes to fill out an hour long shift behind the wheel. Then it was Oscar's turn to potentially send the team into chaos. The rules state, third penalty, hour long break. Fourth penalty, two hour long break. Fifth penalty, you're out for the day. So we really could not take any penalties or we would have no chance of catching Team Chris Fix, which by the way, at this point, we're about 12 laps down. But Oscar did a great job keeping the car on the track, driving aggressively, keeping his lap times low, around two minutes to sub two minutes, not breaking the car, and having a great time. Now we're approaching the end of the day, and at the end of the day, people get aggressive. And with a really hot, really aggressive track, we knew what driver we needed out there, our fastest driver. We got Jared behind the wheel to finish out the session and take the checkered flag for the first day. And across the line! Woo! This way. There you go. Dude! How did that feel? Really? So it, when I went to go out, there was a red flag first. Yeah, dude. That, that was, was awesome. That was that was really good. It was slick as snot. So uh -huh. I was really like uncomfortable for five laps. And then I just I hit a groove. I found the Batmobile E30 and just ran with him. And I think he's one of the leaders. And like for four laps, I was on his bumper. You were you were uh, a second off the pace of uh, Chris Fix's fastest lap. So Chris you got you got 148. Lap. You got 149. So I mean, and that car is it's faster than this. Faster. It's, it's a lot, lot faster than power. this. So yeah, dude, that was that was amazing. Oh. I, I saw that your times were like, oh, Jared just hit a 152, and it was like, and then we checked like Jared hit 149. <laughs> like he is he is getting after it. It, it. it worked out really well. We got some good clean traffic. One thing I was incredibly excited to see is Rich rebuilds out there. Yeah, we he did. Past him. He did three laps. Look, look, you know what? Yeah, no, laps. it's it's he, he got out there, dude. But uh, yeah, we went right past it. Oh, How do you feel, dude? We finished the day in lemons. That, absolutely. That's the first time. The car the yeah. car did not blow up. Dude. I am I am super dude. super proud, man. This is this is awesome. Oscar did a good job. Oscar did a good job. Yeah. Oscar did a great job. Oh, not having the butt pad is a little rough, yeah. dude. That was awesome. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Oh, this car is good. And we still got a good bit of tire left. Oh, yeah. The the brakes are... <laughs> you, <laughs> they're, they're a little... They're a little dusty. They're a little spicy, yeah. It's fine. All right. Uh, so, one one day down. One more to go. One more to go. And tomorrow, Chris is going to drive. Uh, Chris and Kyle. So, uh, hopefully, I... they, they enjoy the car. We're gonna find eggs after Chris drives. Yeah, I don't think he's, he's, he's gonna lay an egg. Experienced anything like that? No, that that was. Uh, we saw that it started getting 
real uh, aggressive. Yeah. It's like real this is spicy. Yeah. So it was. It started getting um, a little drier, and then it was the last hour, and we saw that like the cars were coming down here way faster. <laughs> While the race wrapped on the East Coast, Kyle and I were attending a celebration of life for our friend on the West Coast. And this is something that neither of us had a second thought about missing. My friend Blanche unfortunately passed away at the age of 30 from brain cancer. And the simplest way to put it is that we, we couldn't have lost a better person. In her early 20s, she moved to Guatemala to help with charities and help build communities and she touched so many people and she invited me to Guatemala and she was the type of person on New Year's Eve that would drive halfway across the country in a like $7 cab to come pick me up from the airport, take me to the craziest party in Guatemala on New Year's Eve and lock eyes from across the room and give me this look that's like, hey, this, this roof's not gonna cave in, right? Like this place is safe enough. And when we made it through the whole night, sing songs and watch the sunrise on the cliffside. She's a few years younger than me, but still managed to teach me a lot, a lot of important things about life. Like to smile really, really big. Her nickname in Guatemala is Blanquita, so you'll see on the back of our wing we have bees for Blanquita. And at the end of this video, I'm working on a little something that's a little bit bigger uh, in her honor, and you guys might be able to help, so stay tuned for that. So like I said, Kyle and I were at a celebration of life, celebrating her life with all the wonderful people that she knew and loved. So I wanted to make sure I did my part. I loaded the Lamborghini trunk, trunk, and passenger seat, chock full of all the beer I could stack in there, headed to the after party to drop it off and make sure everybody would have a night that they will be sick from for a long time. Flipped the car around because I had to go to the airport and caught a terrible picture of an epic sunset. Type of sunset that just, I won't forget. And then the flight got double delayed at the airport. Every delay means hours off the track time. After our flight got delayed the second time, Kyle opted not to fly to New York because it looked like we probably wouldn't even be able to drive the race car and it would be a shame for him to fly round trip to New York not to race. In the air, I nearly lost my mind as we were basically flying racetrack style ovals in the sky to kill time to make us even later, but eventually we did land. 9 a.m., race just started. Oscar's out on track first. I got my helmet, I got my gear, gotta go get my check luggage, and then get to the race. Looks like I'm gonna be able to drive today though. And that was a red-eye flight, so that was how I spent my Saturday night, but Sunday morning, East Coast time, back at the track, the team is taking care of business. That is until Oscar lands Oscar's himself. Oscar's in the principal's office. Yeah. I see a lot of mud on the back of the car. Yeah. What did my boy do? He had an oversupply of awesome. Oh. That leaked out in the form of a little bit of an excursion off the racing surface. Oh, did he go, did he go mudding a little bit? This time it's the first in the morning. Looks like Jay had his Wheaties and just got a nice talking to and sent back on our way. And Oscar got back out there and threw down some great lap times. Yeah, here. How is it over there? It's pretty good. Car's running great. I'm loving this thing more and more. Oh, you, you got them hot. You're doing good out there. Yeah. Now it's time for Jared to get behind the wheel. We're driving in the rain, so everything's a little bit more technical. And unfortunately, early into his stint, we catch a big one. Fifth overall penalty, I think, and our second of the day. He's at the principal's office. It's only his first time. And we interrupted Jay's lunch and he's pissed. I feel like we've seen this car and it interrupted my lunch, by the way. You know, I'm I'm very sorry about that. I apologize. What's my first time? Yeah, well, we don't care about you. You guys all look the same. It's just like whining eyeballs inside of a camera. <laughs> You're all the same to us. All right, well, I think we're tired of seeing this car it up. So uh, who wants to get strapped to the roof? Oscar. Got three. Oh. <laughs> you guys know how this works? No. Real simple. Got this nice saran wrap. Take one of the offending drivers. He gets up here, kind of like Superman. We're going to give him a bullhorn and he's going to have to apologize for endangering everybody on track. So who's it going to be? Oscar. All right. Oscar. 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 All right. Somebody strap him on. Sorry, we're terrible drivers. YouTube is no excuse. It's not even a real job. <laughs> After what looked like ridiculously fun humiliation that put a lot of smiles on everybody's face, Jared was back out and doing what Jared does, getting us fast lap times and getting us back into the running. At this point, Team Chris Fix is ahead of us by 30 laps, and Team Rich Rebuilds has completed four laps 
but on Sunday morning their car just decided four laps was enough and it was out. And after the miserable drive from JFK to New Jersey Motorsports Park, fresh off her red eye, your boys finally arrived. All right guys, I'm on track. Car's behind me. These guys are tired. They've been racing all day long. It's hot out here, man. The beat. Um, it's time for me to finally get to drive. I'm very, very excited. Dude, you're gonna have a blast, but just be careful, man. Yeah, I will be, I will be. Um, yeah, I'm really, really excited. Anyways, car's sitting here. We don't wanna waste time. I'm gonna jump in it and uh, drive as long as I can. The team was exhausted. The camera batteries were all dead, but I had set one goal for myself. That was to arrive at the racetrack and drive until the race was over. There's about an hour and 10 minutes left in the race, or so I thought. And the one thing in the back of my mind was if we get one more penalty, if I catch a penalty like everybody else has, that we will be pulled off the track for a mandatory minimum of one hour and we will finish the race sitting in the pits, which was the last thing I wanted. So it's time to try and figure out uh, the shape of this racetrack and how to drive on it. Okay, so we have some uh, monitoring software here and Chris just went out and what, what's he doing? Uh, well, his first lap was a 326, which is understandable because he has never seen the track or anything like this before. Uh, and then he started improving. He got down to a 223, and now he's running 216s and 212s around the track, which is really not that bad considering he's not driven the car, yeah. never been on an HPDE day, and has never done door-to-door -door racing. So he's getting more comfortable, hopefully gonna take it home to the checker, and we're gonna finish the lemons race. Oh, gonna... I mean, fingers crossed, you better knock on, you better find some wood and knock on it. Yeah, right there. Yeah. 45 there we go. minutes to go. 45 minutes to go. That's all that's all we need. 45 minutes to go. So we have probably two more laps until we finish the 24 hours of lemons. Uh Chris is out there. He's been out there for like a good like hour and a half at this point. It'll be an hour and 15 minutes uh that he was out this everyone thought it ended at three and I was fairly certain it was 3 30, and it turns out it is 3 30. So he has never been on a racetrack. He's never done any sort of performance driving. And he's out there in a, in a car that was built in just a few days. This is, this is very exciting for me. Uh, this is very exciting for everybody. I'm super, super proud of being a part of this team. Uh, we're here to cheer Chris on as he goes across the finish line uh, because it, it's going to happen like right now. Yeah, just a couple minutes. It's so cool to be able to come out. Rookie team. First, first time. We haven't finished yet, but I think we got a good chance. Yeah. All right, should be soon. Let's go, let's go, uh, let's go find Chris. Yeah, let's go find Chris. <laughs> How do you feel? Amazing. Unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you. Get back in the pit. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 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 Actually out driving some people, passing some people. Yeah, you got into like a 205, which is a really yeah. good rhythm. Oh, really rhythm. good. That's fantastic. Like, That's I don't fantastic. know the quickest, but you get... Yeah, it was like two minutes. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Yep. Let, it, let it load up. I know you were running some low twos. I'm happy with that, man. That's a good time. I mean, I, first I, time you know, I, I, I never had a, I never had a moment where I was like, oh, there's a clear track. I can practice all the apex yeah. I want. I was always like, that guy's behind me. And I just knew, like, if I get a penalty, I'm going to get a penalty 15 minutes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So they beat us by 20 laps. We both did over 300 laps, putting us in the top third of the entire competition overall, which I'm really, really proud of. And I'm proud of how close we came to Chris Fix's team. But not surprisingly, the overall winner was actually Team Rich Rebuilds because lemons is lemons. And the winners aren't always the ones with the most laps. And it was actually an extremely well-deserved win because they worked really hard on their car the entire event, and that's the lemon spirit. You bring crap, you try and race it, you break it, you fix it, you race some more. So let me just say thank you to everybody that helped support us. eBay Motors for helping support get us out there. Lemons for letting us join into this crazy race. All of the teams, Team Chris Fix for the amazing support that they gave us. Rich Rebuilds, Tavarish, Jared. Links will all be in the descriptions, guys. But I wanna talk about something a little bit more important near and dear to my heart. So 10 years ago, I was down in Guatemala visiting Blanche, learning about new cultures, new places, and I had the opportunity to do something cool, which was write some software for some orphanages to help their young ones be able to, uh, just learning software, right? And that was a really cool thing that I got to do um, because a lot of my friends are connected with a lot of nonprofits down there. So Alex, Blanche's ex-boyfriend, was just here staying at my house and he talked to me and he let me know that laptops are of in dire need right now down there and the kids need laptops to be able to you know further their technological um, education and not only that but some of the employees at these nonprofits and these charities don't have laptops either so I thought I, I bet I know some people that know some people that got a bunch of laptops the car community the automotive community is very tightly entwined with the technological community so we got to be able to get some and i'm planning a larger picture deal that i'm going to film of an episode where we go down and we help a lot of lives in guatemala and the laptops are a part of that and that's where i want to ask you guys for help because i think between my sponsors and other things like that i got all the rest of the stuff i want to do figured out but laptops if you work at a company, know a company, something like that, that is, say, phasing out a bunch of old laptops, these do not have to be high-speed, top-of-the-line laptops. Old, old, worn-out, out-of-date technology is perfect. These are for children to be able to use. Laptops and chargers. If you've got a bunch of them in a warehouse and you want to either sell them or donate them, it's going to a charity so you get the tax break. Email me at chris at bs for build Like I said, I can pay cash for them or we could go through the donation route as well. I'm looking to get between 50 and 100 uh, laptops total, and that'll be part of some stuff that we're gonna bring down and bring to Guatemala. And we're gonna do a really, really cool thing for a community in Blanche's honor. So, if you know anybody, you got that connect, hit me up. And that's it. We raced lemons, July 16th. There's a lemons here in Oregon. We are planning on racing at that as well. But uh, I know you guys all wanna see the boat get worked on, so I'm gonna go start working on the boat. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace!